What is design? Wow, that's a big question. OK, well, let's start with what design isn't. Design is not just about designer labels or making things look good. And there's a lot more to it than the magical design transformations we've all seen in those TV makeover shows. Design is a verb, not just a noun. It's a process, a way of defining problems and developing solutions. Everything man-made is designed. And designers are the problem solvers, using their training, skills and experience to find new solutions to everyday problems, large and small. So what is design? Well, to answer that question, it's probably best if we go back to the beginning. Before the Industrial Revolution, Britain was made up of small, cottage industries with designer makers doing everything themselves. But then along came factories, new machinery and mass production, creating a need for specialist designers. Today, the UK's design industry is worth more than 11 billion pounds. There are over 185,000 designers in Britain, many of whom work in small, dynamic design agencies, a bit like these guys. What they actually do depends on their chosen design discipline. Currently, more than half of all UK design businesses work in communications, digital and multimedia design. Communications design is about finding the best way to explain difficult or complicated concepts. One famous example of communications design is the good old London Underground map, developed in 1933 by a frustrated graphic designer called Harry Beck. The original tube maps were designed to be geographically accurate, which made them overly complex and difficult to read. Thanks to his training as an engineering draftsman, Beck found a new solution to the problem by designing a colour-coded, non-geographic vision of subterranean London, inspired by electrical circuit diagrams. Beck's idea was so successful that revised versions of his map are still in use today, and more recently, designers took a similar no-nonsense approach when developing a series of above-ground maps for the streets of London from streets to stomachs. Yes, designers are hard at work here too, ensuring that the contents of our supermarkets, shopping bags and fridges are jam-packed with innovative packaging design. It's something we all take for granted, but a lot of research, thought and design time has gone into the appearance, functionality and durability of these items. Take ready meals, for example. By observing consumer habits, designers discovered that we tend to make our decisions by actually taking a closer look at the food itself. So that big food picture on the front can be replaced with other useful messages instead. The world of chocolate too has been expertly remoulded under the watchful eye of designers. Consider this fair trade chocolate bar. A redesign a few years back helped to catapult Green and Black's confectionery from dusty health food shops to the shelves of every major food retail outlet in the UK. How? By using graphic design to create a brand identity that heightens the company's association with melt-in-the-mouth luxury. But it wasn't always that way. Branding is about more than graphics and packaging though. From multinational corporations to small enterprises, design helps to create an identity that shapes our understanding of what a company stands for. Sometimes design can convey this message so effectively that we recognize a product without even having to read the label. Coca-Cola. Right? Of course, designers also design things as well. In the world of industrial and product design, designers are hard at work finding new solutions for everyday problems. Which British designer revolutionized the world of the vacuum cleaner by creating a more powerful suction system that also gives us the satisfaction of being able to see the dirt we're dispatching? James Dyson, of course. Design is everywhere you look, shaping, influencing and developing solutions for all those problems we didn't even know we had. By asking the right questions, testing new ideas and listening to feedback from users, designers can solve all kinds of problems in both the real and virtual worlds. The internet is a vast and versatile platform that is constantly being developed and redesigned to suit our needs. Services, for that matter, are often developed with design input these days, making sure that back office systems are efficient, customers get great experiences and that the whole process works seamlessly. Service design often relies on input from several design disciplines at once. Check in with Virgin Upper Class and you'll see that every aspect of the upper class experience has been designed to reflect that upper class tag. But our needs are always changing and with these changes come new solutions to match. In fact, 
the future of design in the UK could even help save the world. Seems a little far-fetched, doesn't it? But when you consider that a designer's starting point is always that elusive problem, their work is driven by what we need, and they're pretty good at innovation. If designers are switched on to protecting our planet, it isn't a bad start, is it? So after all this, what is design? Here's a good way to think about it. If engineering can be summarized as the relationship between nut and bolt, between two man-made things, then design is about the relationship between man-made things and people. After all, almost everything you see, touch or buy has been designed by someone. Design can take so many different shapes and influence every aspect of what we do. And the best design solutions are simpler and more effective than you ever could have dreamed. In fact, I bet someone redesigns this film before too long.